This is one race car that doesn't need a pit stop to refuel. All it needs is a sunny day to keep going. It's the University of Pennsylvania Solar Team Car, which finished third in its class in a recent race from New York City to Philadelphia. Power comes in from the sun uh, and translated into energy, usable energy from the, uh, the solar panels and gets stored into the batteries. And we draw the power out of the batteries to power a, a uh, 15 horsepower DC brushless motor, and that's the propulsion for the car. Although it doesn't look like a typical automobile, this solar car is street legal. Today we broke a new speed record for the car ourselves, and that was 58 miles an hour out on the track. Uh, for the efficiency and rally race, we had it geared so that its maximum speed was about 40 miles an hour, and that was primarily to allow us to run efficiently on 25 and 35 mile an hour speed limit zones. This car, designed by the University of Pennsylvania Solar Car Team, is so easy to operate that anybody could drive it. We actually designed ours especially to be just like a car with an uh, accelerator pedal and a brake pedal in the same spots and uh, just like a normal car. So, except for the, some of the electronic switches that you have to pay attention to and turn on and monitor a lot of the voltages and, and some of the electronics like that, it's pretty, pretty natural to drive. The solar car will be on display this weekend at the Sports Car Grand Prix at Pocono International Raceway. Practice and qualifying for the SCCA cars tomorrow, racing Sunday starting at 9.30. Welcome back. Anglers everywhere were up early this morning. 8 o'clock was the official start of trout season. And one of those anglers is our very own Jim Miller, who joined us last half hour showing him catching a fish. How's it going now, Jim? Andy, I'm at work here. I'm at work, but uh, it's nice of you to join me here at uh, Locust Lake in the Poconos. And I just threw a line out, and I'm live bait fishing right now, and I've been very, very successful and getting a fish to take the bait, but I lost two fish right here at the shoreline. Uh, but the fish are actually biting here. We're in the Poconos, and as I mentioned, this is Locust Lake Village, and the weather conditions are starting to diminish, but the fish are really biting now. I was caught earlier uh, by this gentleman over here who caught me on a donut. Now, even I bit on the donut, but uh, that's the nature of trout season. This is the first day, officially, of trout season. We've had a lot of fun. I keep watching my bobber out there because the trout are actually following the bait and hitting right here at the shoreline. Now, I'm not going to run the shot of me catching a fish earlier today, but we do have legitimate proof that I caught a trout today and uh, that's the beauty of Pennsylvania fishing especially trout season the kids can come out here uh, the senior citizens come out here uh, the youngsters can come out and enjoy themselves millions of fishermen are on the waters of Pennsylvania today doing exactly what I'm doing and they, uh -oh, oh wait a minute now my barber just got hit ladies and gentlemen wait, wait a minute right here on live television watch my barber now stay with me come on fish look out now Ah, uh, wait a minute, there it goes. Come on now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is thrilling and exciting. See it going? Uh-oh, I got one, ladies and gentlemen. You ain't gonna believe this. Here it is on live television. Come on, fish. Look at here. Oh, uh, <laughs> now you think we set this up, don't you? You think we set, ah, uh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, stay with me, stay with me. Ten and <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I told you I'd catch a fish cause this is my lake, Locust Lake. Back to you guys in the studio, this was not set Slippery up. Slippery little Hi. suckers, aren't they? You know, Jim, can you hear me? <laughs> I Jim, hear you Andy, God Jim, bless you know, America. Did you, did you have that fish drugged and then Honest wake him up? Honest, that was a real hit <laughs> oh, we right there. It. Live bait, what it's all about. Chick, you're still the man. Lauren, for you. thanks for joining me on the lake today. We paid the fish. <laughs> it's an extra. <laughs> well, you want you know, never, never a dull moment with Jim Miller, that's for sure. Well, anyway, if you are not going... When you talk about the experience of a lifetime, ladies and gentlemen, today for me was indeed that defining moment. 
to become one of only 10,000 runners in the world to help carry the Olympic torch and flame through the streets of Philadelphia today was that time in life when you walk and run with Olympic history. Joining me this morning was my special escort. Her name is Susan Yagelski from Boston Lake, New York, and she was with me every step of the way. I felt great. It just the, the heat radiating off it was just kind of like symbolic to me of the whole like, you know, the flame and where it started and where it's going and the whole Olympic spirit. No. It is really hard to put into words how something like this would affect someone, but after today's run, I collected some thoughts and looked back over what it meant to me. You know, as I uh, ran the Olympic torch today, I finally realized the historic significance of what I was doing. I was representing uh, my country, uh, my friends, my family, uh, my mother and father, and my five kids, Jimmy, Scotty, Jennifer, Jessica, Jordan, and my lovely wife, Judith Ann. You know, it hits you when you run this route, uh, just how special it was. I would consider uh, uh, today's event for me uh, probably the athletic moment of my lifetime. It was really, truly special. So this Olympic day is done, and the memory will last forever. The Olympic torch, the Olympic run, the Olympic games, special for us all today in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. With the Olympic torch, Jim Miller, 28 Eyewitness Sports. Said, I can't believe that on a Friday night that a very serious sporting issue has come to our attention. We are actually in the uh, mayor of Wilkesbury's office talking about a boxing match. Is this possible? The mayor's up there working now. Let's ask him a few questions. Why don't you start it off? Mayor, what makes you think you can beat Jimmy Connors in a fight? I'm like the Energizer Bunny. I'm going to knock his block off. You know what I think? I think I could beat him. And you know what? He's going to be singing, it's going to sound like a broken record that skips because his head's going to be dangling. Mr. Mayor, with all due respect, you have the size and the edge over Mayor Connors. Don't you feel bad about picking on a, a smaller guy? Yeah, but you know, I'm a nice guy, and I want to raise it for charity. We're going to give it to the Police Athletic League, and I think it's good for all of us, you know? And uh, I hope he just doesn't back out and become a wimp up there in Scranton. And Mayor, what's this about you going around calling Mayor Connors a punk? No, I'm not calling him a punk. I'd call him to his face. I'm going to knock his block off. He is a punk. And get in the ring, and we're going to show him. I just hope he doesn't back out. And I'm challenged to come down here. We'll have it at Coughlin High School right here in Wilkesburg. There's a lot of nice places to have it. And, Mayor, the most important question of all. Mr. Mayor, what time is it? It's time for Sports Friday tonight. And remember, Jimmy, I'm going to knock you out. Hi there, sports fans. Last week, Mayor Tom McGrady, a dear friend of mine, challenged me to a fight. Now, I know I could take this guy. However, I have a note here from my dentist and a note here in my hot little hand from my chiropractor advising me not to mess up this nice smile that they worked on in this great body in a fight with Tom McGrady. I know that I could take him. As a matter of fact, I'm 49 years old, but I have the body of a 48-year-old. And as a matter of fact, I know I would float like a butterfly and sting like a flea. No, Mayor, that's sting like a bee. Oh, sting like a bee. That's right. I could float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. But I don't want to disappoint the kids that we're going to raise money for and the police officers. 
So in order to uphold the honor of the people of the city of Scranton and of my family, I brought in a substitute, my little cousin, professional fighter and Golden Gloves champ, Chris Walsh, with his trainer, professional fighter, Irish Gene Reed. And they're going to uphold our honor by fighting Tom McGrordy. I think Mayor McGrordy. McGrordy's going down in one. He's going down in one. one. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm we'd all like McGrordy. to say now, Sports, Sports Friday, Friday begins next. right now. Say, do you know when Sports Friday starts? How about you, Victory? Do you know when Sports Friday starts? I don't know when it starts. Maybe you should ask the cheerleaders. Sports Friday starts right now! Anyone who's ever skied has gone through it. Their first day on the six. Well, actually, I'd been on skis twice before, but that was more than 15 years ago, so essentially this was my first day out. Well, basically, Sid, we're going to work on uh, learning about the equipment, getting comfortable in the boots, learning how the equipment works, and then we'll just be walking around on skis, getting the feel for what the skis feel like and how they slide on the snow. First, I had to learn to walk up the hill using small side steps. That was supposed to be easier later when I went up frontwards. Yeah. Remember that as you turn, then the thing I had the most trouble with, here, probably the most important here, thing, the wedge. Here. Your balance is pretty good. I think a little bit it may be some alignment in your leg. Being a little bit bow-legged makes it a little bit harder to hold the wedge to get on the inside edges. Um, so we're going to work on that a little bit more. I was given a demonstration in the wedge by Jordan Miller of Jim Miller fame. And then it was my turn, but it still didn't look like Jordan's wedge and he didn't use any poles either. Before I would leave the mountain though, I had to give it one shot down powder keg. Some smart aleck though changed the sign to powder puff, so I thought it was the beginner slope. All in all, I came away with one conclusion. That I didn't look as good as Jordan, but then again, I didn't look as bad as this guy, WBRE TV director Tom Warner. And I did come through without any injuries so that I could ski again. <laughs> On the slopes, I'm Sid Michaels, 28, Eyewitness Sports. At Shawnee, not only do they have skiing, they have snow tubing. But as for that skiing, one slope open right now, but they expect to have top to bottom skiing by the weekend. Uh, you know, I proved it. I was human, and I did make some mistakes. I'll get the book and read it. I want to know exactly what uh, he felt about what happened to him over the last 14 years. And thinking today, he lied to every player and every fan and every friend he was ever involved with since, what, 1986 or 7? He lied to Bench. He lied to Morgan. He lied to me. He lied to all the minor leaguers we played together with. He lied to Foster, Sparky Anderson. Uh, I just find that incredible that in this day and age now he says, oh, I lied, but I'm sorry, let me into the Hall of Fame and let me back to baseball and manage. I just don't think he can do that anymore.
Before Jim Miller started his sports casting career, he was a pitcher in the minor leagues and played with Pete Rose in 1961 and 1962. He still remembers in his second profession telling all of us Pete Rose was banned from baseball for life. It was a sad point in my personal professional career at that time uh, to announce that uh, my former teammate was being banned from baseball for life. Plus, if he was innocent, he would have never signed the ban from baseball because that's not Pete Rose. So it was a painful time for me as a former player and friend of Pete Rose back in the early 80s. I asked Jim, now that Pete has come clean, should he be in the Hall of Fame? Elect him into the Hall of Fame, but I would have stipulations on that. I would have no ceremony, no pomp, no pageantry. I would put him in on a plaque uh, his hit record. I would also put that he bet on baseball, and I would never, ever allow him back in the sport of baseball. Phil Shaner, 28 Sports.